We got this whole thing scratched all the way around, including in front of the eyes, under the lip. The whole form has been prepped and ready to go. Uh, first thing we're going to do now is we're going to set our horns on there. We're going to get them leveled up with the back and the front to make sure that they're going to go on right. And then you're going to come back to the center and center them up. And when you're looking at the center, you're not just looking at the center line on the mannequin. You're trying to line it up center and you're trying to look here and here to make sure that you're going to have this thing centered on your, on your mannequin. You don't really want to trust the center line because you don't know if, if when they molded this thing if this was centered or not. Uh, because a lot of times they'll go off a little bit. But in general, that's pretty dang close. Now we'll just hold that there with one finger and put a sheetrock screw in back here. I can get my drill in there. All you're trying to do is re replace the, the material that was taken off at time of skinning. Not this a lot of material that you're replacing. Yeah. Very I'm little. just going to move this around to your side. So, Yeah, there's not much there at all. Not like some rams and stuff to where, I mean, when you skin a ram, there's a lot of material gets yeah. taken off, but these things almost don't have any. And uh, we set our horns a little deeper because of the, the shrinkage on the horns. Uh, we measure, actually measured our horns when we were in Africa to find out what the shrinkage was going to be. And on kudus, I had an inch and a quarter shrinkage. Shrink up? Just shrink up. Wow. And, and that's from the base. It's not on the other end. It's from the base that went up. So you've got to set your skull a little bit deeper and that compensates right in here above mm -hmm. the eye so you're not pulling and, and going, having problems trying to set the skin on there. All right, in this picture you can see right behind the horns, and this is on a lot of the African species, right behind the horns, there is a divot that comes down in, just like on the Gemsbach we did yesterday. If you can see the, the muscle that comes across the top here, and then it drops way down in. It comes down pretty deep, and, and if you look at your set of horns, it comes down here. If you didn't put this, this defined crease in, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to bring your skin right up close up here. This is supposed to go, you tuck it down, and this has been, the horn on this one's been broken off, uh, probably when they pulled them off over there in Africa. But you just put a little divot back here, and just sort of define this. And when you put that skin up there, it's just going to come right up to it. And as, yeah, it just drops right off in, and then right around as it starts to kick, you can't do it while it's real soupy, but take your eye tool or your, whatever you want to use, just a little shaping tool and pull a little bit of this away and you're making a ridge right here along the bottom of the horn and that'll it'll give an edge to bring that edge of the skin up too and that hair will lay real nice right up along the horn just like it's supposed to. Right. And it helps when you're setting your eyes to go ahead and use your light in your hands and figure out which way that pupil is and then that way you can take and sort of put your angle and your cant in the the clay and you won't have to fight it as much when you get it up there. What I do is I take my light and I, I find my pupil and then I, I run it right along the top of the the edge of it and bring it right up to the top of the pupil and then when I get it to where it's, it's set steady then I can look down and we're right on 90 degrees right there. So that'll work really good. And then you just get another little roll of clay. I don't get too technical other than that about setting the eyes. Because um, a lot of times, you, if you do have an eye get screwed up or something in your mounting process, you can always reach in there with a long upholster pin and move that eye. Move I've moved a bunch of them, so, so I got that a little You know, a lot of guys, when they roll their clay out, they'll roll it out on table, hot dog size, and make sure, oh, they're just perfect. Yeah, and you, then you end up screwing it up when you go to put it up. When you pull it on, you mess it up. Yeah. So you're just trying to to get the simulated eye shape up there. You're not going to go too crazy yet. Um, you're just getting it up there because when you go to pull that skin over the top, you're going to distort that clay anyway. Uh, guys that do them with, uh, with sculpt all and stuff for like competitions, if you're doing it that way, you have to get it right because then it's going to kick. Right. But with clay, I mean, you can come back two or three days later and reshape that eye if you need to.
So we're going to go ahead and pull this on. And oops, got it right on my arm. That figures. And just sort of slide it back. Now we got to remember this cape was thin, so we're not going to grab this thing and actually try to pull this the hair or nothing, uh, because you could pull this pull that hair right out. I don't think it's going to be a major problem now because this skin this uh, hide piece is really thick. Okay, and then we're going to get uh, the nose and everything sort of lined up. I just line the noses up and get it where it's supposed to go. You're not actually tucking the nose for permanent purposes right now anyway. You try to find the little cleft and just pull it out and get it lined up and then sort of tuck the front, tuck the back a little. Just kind of get it in a position? Yeah, just you're going to just put it in a position and that way you don't end up with your nose twisted sideways while you're back there trying to do all the stuff on the back of the head. Basically what you're doing is you're filling and then you're coming back and you're going to take that fill back out. You're just trying to make sure you don't have any cracks between the, the eyelid and the glass. And I've got a little bitty place right here that drummed. And what you'll do is you just push that in and you can just uh, use this as an ad adhesive and it'll just pull it right down into there. We've got all the sculpting dried. It's been about an hour. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start painting. I've got the airbrush up. i got a little bit of light gray in it. The first thing we start with is light gray. And, uh, and then go to a, a little bit of a chocolatey type of a brown. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but the lip down here underneath, is it's just flakes through the hair. See, this is what I was talking about, about the lip not being exposed. That's just the, it's just the, the little bit of epidermis color down through here. So you just flake that in a little bit with a little bit of gray and then up to a little bit of, of uh, cleft right here. And then we're going to a little bit darker, uh, darker gray to almost a, like a dark brown in here. And then the eyes, they've got just a shadow of, of light gray underneath. And then you come over with dark dark brown and just feather everything in. So and we gotta clean the glass off anyway. So up in here I just go dark brown because that's the the base color of it. So we've got that okay. We've got the little bit of color. Everything's fine. Yeah, with this water base you're not worried about the overspray or anything. Uh -oh. no, right up there it really with the towel. It's so easy to take back out. It's, and it looks like you're putting a lot of paint on there, but you're actually not. And the reason it looks like you're putting so much on is because you're coloring the hair. But when you come back and take it out of the hair, you're going to see it's pretty nice. Well, the black pigment in the skin already doesn't take much paint. Uh -uh. Just a very dusting, yeah. light dusting. Now we're just going to groom him off. We're going to loosen the hair up. We've got just a little bit of, of uh, hair gel and stuff. We'll just groom just to loosen him up and make his hair look a little more normal. And that's some of the hair gel that's coming off. That doesn't hurt anything. Okay, so it's just to go down. And the other thing you want to do before I forget is try to groom this around the mouth and the nose forward. Every time you go to a competition, you always get busted. Somebody says, oh, you got to groom forward, and it, it does help you just loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, you loosen that hair up, it just livens it up, don't yeah, it? Yeah, it does.